Hello, 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 community. Today we have a funny one. Look at this. MIT hoax, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. A new study, June 15, 2023. Exploring the MIT mathematics and electrical engineering and computer science curriculum using LLMs. And look at those people. MIT, Boston University, Harvard University, Stanford University. And you say, my goodness, this is the creme de la creme. This is the best thing that ever happened to us. So what is now the content? It is easy to say, hey, we take all the different courses that are offered by MIT in mathematics and ECS, and we have a look at them. We take all their pre-exam and exam question and answers from all those courses, algebra, calculus, programming, algebra, calculus 2, quantum, quantitative methods for NLP, computation structures, electrical circuits, principle of continuum applied mathematics, electromagnetic waves and application, topology. So in total, we have here 4,550 parts. So we have now, no, oh, MIT, and all these uh, very Ivory League universities have said, we have now a data set of 4,550 question and solution from the midterm exam, the final exam, everything about MIT mathematics and electrical engineering and computer science courses required for obtaining an official MIT degree. And they say now, oh, so we uh, evaluate now the ability of LLMs to fulfill the graduation requirements of any MIT major in mathematics and ECS. So, is MIT really giving away its degree now to GPT-4? Let's have a look at this. So you have eight un, uh, undergraduate degree paths. Yeah, electrical science, general mathematics, applied mathematics. And you say, hey, wait a minute. This is a, there's a lot of reasoning going on. Huh? This is about some mathematical logic. GPT-4 can solve pure mathematical problem. Really? Are we that far advanced? And to say, well, we make here an experiment and this is the official data from the official publication from MIT. The preprint, oh yeah, I have to stress it's a preprint. It's not a peer reviewed paper. And they said, hey, so look here, parts 4,550, those are the number of question and answer that we have. And we give it to JetGPT, so GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we have a success rate of 36%. Now you might say one third is not bad. I mean, this is a pure mathematical scientific question. 36%, this sounds great. No? And I thought, wow, this, this is impressive. Already one third. I mean, they would not be able to pass, but one third, wow, this is amazing. And then we have here the official preprint by MIT, and they had also other models. And I had Stiebel uh, Vicuna, you know our Vicuna model, 13 billion free trainable parameter. It's based on Llama. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's still based on Llama. No, you're not allowed to use this for any commercial activities. So they trained here a 13 billion uh, LLM here on user shared conversation with shared GPT. So any user conversation a user has with GPT. And they say the MIT test result is now 48%. And I thought, if 48%, half of the answers of the mathematical final exams of MIT, the answers are within the shared conversation of user have with chat GPT. I thought, my goodness, those are highly intelligent user. They only talk about mathematics with chat GPT. And I thought, I am the only one who is using this for some a little bit more than, hey, what's the weather like? And what is the diet? And what can I cook today? And I was absolutely impressed. I thought, wow, to have on a 13 billion trainable parameter model, this is nothing. This is so small, you wouldn't even see it. User shared conversation are, must be absolutely about mathematics. And I said, wow, 50%, close to 50%. And then, the Lama 30B, I said 30B is just 35%. So, but this is in the realm of chat GPT, which is much bigger. So I said, wow, this, this is also impressive for a Lama model. No? 
And then I looked further down. And then we have here the Lama 65B with just 4 percentage point increase. But I mean, close to 40% soul freight of MIT mathematical final exam question. Are they now so easy? Is MIT, I don't know, is this MIT? And then they told me, hey, in the paper, you know, we, we looked at this and since, let me have a look at this, these are here all our, our major courses in MIT that you have to take, analysis, functional analysis. I thought, yeah, if you have so many students, so many authors, oops, sorry, so many authors participating, can you go to the to the students in the classes and, you know, sometimes students trade their insight on the exam questions? You know what I mean, eh? Can they really collect from 30 courses? Here, the, 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 the exam questions and the final uh, graded questions, if you have some very intelligent people and they have an A grade on all the different courses, yes, they do have the right answers to all the different uh, questions asked in the pre-exam and the final exam and everything. So I said, yeah, it is possible to collect all of this. And 4,550 questions and answers. Yes, you can do it. There's no, there's no problem. It's a lot of work. So I thought, wow, impressive. And then, sorry, just have to go back. We were here. And then I said, you know, we do not want to publish this data set because these are official exam questions by MIT. So this is precious. We don't want to share this. So I said, well, I understand that this is really of value for MIT. No? If you have, for example, even if it's from last year, to the year before the last year, you know exactly what's going to be the topic that they're going to ask you in the exam. No? And they said, hey, we took all these answers and we fine-tuned here a LAMA model, a 30B model, with our MIT data set. And then they did it uh, in the evaluation run. And I thought, wow, now there must be over 80 plus percent success rate. And then they had 47%. And this is the first time I thought, this, this is strange. If you fine tune this on the correct answers, so you fine tune it with the results that you want the system to behave, and you get less than a stable vicuna that is one third. 13B that was trained on some random user data. You know, there's all mathematical genius, of course, but, and, and this is, I thought, this is an absolute fast, I mean, it's MIT, so, and I have here the official preprint. So this became very interesting. And then I said, okay, but at least it's below half. So, but half of mathematics, wow. And then I continue reading. Yeah, so this is the MIT model. The model from MIT, fine-tuned with the MIT data set of all 30 courses and all 4,500 answers. And of course the question. And then, then came the GPT-4 part. And now it gets interesting. And now they claim GPT-4, out of the box, the vanilla GPT-4 can solve all mathematical questions on a final exam of MIT on mathematics with 90% success rate. And I was impressed. I said, how is this? Imagine, we do not need any access to any other database. If GPT-4 is able, an MIT mathematical final exam, an MIT major in mathematics is able to solve this with 90%. Forget about every connection, forget about link chain, forget about any connectivity. Yeah, maybe even forget about uh, mathematical reasoning. It is happening within GPT-4. So we do not need any causal inference with graph theory. And it was, I was shocked, 90%. And then I looked further down. Yeah, if it add few shot and, and chain of thought, we get 97%. And then, and this, this was it. If we just say experts, it is 100% success rate. And it, whenever you see 100% success rate, you know there's something not optimal. Let's put it this way. So at this stage, what do you think? Is this a sound mathematical published by MIT, published by professors? Is this a perfect study? 
is this the way it should be done? That you say, hey, for our mathematical MIT exams, GPT can achieve 100%. So this is where I start to smile. Okay, but you see, very, very interesting. And then I started, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not that intelligent. I started to read here table five. And this is from officially, it's just a copy from the official MIT preprint. And I said, hey, this is the solve rate of the LLMs of the MIT test. But we only use here 288 non-image, okay? I don't understand. I focus on non-image question, on text well question in mathematics. That's perfectly fine. Of all types. So I thought, hey, great. So from the 4,550, they reduce now to some percentage points, less than 5%. And they only have 288 questions. I mean, you must run this uh, 10 times, 20 times. So this is the average value of 10, 20 runs, no? So is this statistical significant? And there was nothing, no information at all about it. And I thought, MIT giving you statistical information without anything else? Nothing? So it, I, I started to smile even more, I have to tell you. And then this expert. And this is something, look, what is this expert prompting? I said, well, MIT expert prompting, I have to read this. So, and it is, you are an MIT professor of computer science and mathematics teaching calculus. This is expert prompting to get you 100% success rate on MIT mathematics final exams? Wow. And then I say, hey, you can also say, hey, give an educated guess of three experts in the field most capable of solving this equation. They say, and then you know, LLM, GPT-4, comes back and generates names, real names of a professor, I don't know, Professor A, Professor B, Professor C, of multiple expert, and then you name one. So you say, hey, system, you are now Professor A in mathematics, and solve the question. And I said, this, this, this brings you 100%. How should this be possible? And I started to smile a little bit more. And then in the limitations, you know, I started to read, really read this preprint because I said, is this amazing or is it a hoax? And I said, uh, limitations of our work is that inference and automatic grading using GPT-4 is slow. One minute for each question. And I thought, oh, this I understand now. So they had for each of the 288 question, answer and question pairs, I took a minute, so okay, I see that they had financial limitations. Oops, uh. So, but you know what is there? Automatic grading using GPT-4. And you know, whenever you use a GPT system to grade its own answer, I said, what did it mean? Automatic grading by GPT-4 on a data set? And I thought, wow. And I was looking for further information and there was hardly anything at all about how GPT-4 grades itself to achieve 100%. So if you have, if, even if you're not a mathematician, if you are just, just a, an experimental physicist, you know, just as uh, really, I mean, experimental physicists, they do experiment. And if you say you have a system called GPT-4 and this system evaluates itself on its own performance, you know, there is maybe a slight problem, but I thought, hey, this is by MIT. I mean, what have they written about it? And uh, you're not gonna believe it. Eh? This, this is the limitations. So I started to smile a little bit more. And that really from the official archive, <laughs> they say our evaluation demonstrated GBD4, Combined system, expert, future learning, chain of thought, self critique, collaborative decision making, a perfect solve rate. So here we have it now in text. The official evaluation that GPT 4 has a perfect solve rate on a randomly selected test set of this question. And you know, remember I told you, hey, 288. So you have to run, I don't know, 10, 20 to be statistically significant huh? from 4,550. Yeah? And I was looking over there now for some further statistical details, but there was nothing. 
So, yeah, so we have here an official MIT statement on a 3D print server that has not been peer reviewed. ChatGPT has solved one third of an entire MIT curriculum, which is amazing in itself if it would be GPT 8. And then they continue to say, but GPT 4 with prompt engineering, well, okay, this is standard, achieves a perfect, a perfect success rate on an MIT curriculum. And if you work with GPT-4 on mathematical questions, you know that this is hardly, hardly, even in the best idea you can have, a realistic scenario. And on the very first page, you know, I, did, I have to show you this. Sorry, sorry, but this is now emotional. Where am I? Here. You know, at the end, you have your professor or whatever. And I said, okay, MIT, Columbia, and Boston University, Ido Brori. And I said, I have to, I have never heard of him, so I'm so sorry, but I'm not an expert in Boston University. So I said, okay, I, I, I check. What can I find? And this is his homepage on MIT, Professor, Department of Computer Science, Co Chair of Graduate Admission, Boston University, Department of Computer Science, MIT. Research focus on artificial general intelligence, computer vision, and machine learning for education. So I thought, wow, this is an expert. He has a textbook. Look, he has awards. He's a senior chair at Unbelievable. He has awards 2021, 2021, 2019. Best student paper award. Faculty member, Boston University, Department of Computer Science. So I thought, so this is real? Is this real? And then I read a hint and they wrote, instead of prohibiting using LLMs in the classroom, which of course, this is an interesting question for the strategic orientation of Boston University and MIT and Harvard and Stanford and all of these uh, bodies that participated here in this preprint, in the publication of this preprint, we advocate for their integration of LLMs by designing meta question that incorporate LLM generated answers, requiring students to evaluate the completion and correctness of these responses. And I said, what is this now? I thought it was about the evaluation of ChatGPT and GPT-4 and other systems like Vicona. And now they advocate for the integration of LLMs, but say, hey, students should learn to evaluate if an answer given by GPT or chat GPT is correct and it's complete. So I started to smile again. I said, this is either a very intelligent hoax or something happened with this preprint. It is not a peer reviewed publication. I have to repeat this. And then, I mean, if you look at the courses, just to give you a feeling, yeah? differential equation, complex numbers, exponential, polynomial look at what this is all about functional analysis han banach theorem duality operators hilbert schmidt and trace class operator spectral theorem gpt4 can solve 100 percent of this really and it's not able to solve my most basic mathematical questions i have on gpt4 so I think this is a fascinating, fascinating preprint. If it would not be by MIT and Stanford and whoever, I would say, okay, it's clear for me. But what do you think? And just to give you an idea, I have here another hint for you. Because on table 16 of this beautiful preprint by all those beautiful institutions, remember that I told you, hey, it's about 3.6% only from the data set. And then I found table 16. So they have here for their courses, here we have our courses and here we have our solve rate. And they say the table includes the number of parts and the GPT-4 solve rate for each MIT course. So now if you had a question, hey, 3.6%, what about the other? Close to 100%. And here we have it. For each MIT course, we have the GPT-4 solve rate here table 16 and look 
percent, 95%, 95%, 95%, 93%. There's nowhere you go. He is 79. I think this is the, the, the worst. And I said, wow, you are up in the high 80s, in the 90s. Yeah, of course, 100%. So imagine. So it is not just a statistical fluctuation. Here they tell you that GPT-4 is able to solve almost all courses. As you can see here, down in the last line, total 88%. This eigenvalue, eigenvectors, diagonalization, normal modes, matrix exponential, variation of parameters, heat equation, wave equation, nonlinear. It is able to solve all final exam MIT questions with 88%. So what do you think about this official preprint, official preprint from this professor? And just to show you, where is it? No, oh, here. Is this something from MIT, Boston University, Harvard University, and Stanford University? Would you be impressed by the titles, by the institutions, by the people, by the official professor? I guess he supervised this. I don't know. This is my, but an official professor from MIT, Columbia and Boston. What do you think about this study? Is this the perfect study on mathematics? Is this the perfect study on computer science? Is this really exploring MIT mathematics and ECS curriculum with, GPT, with large language model, ChatGPT and GPT-4? Is this really? The real answer to the intelligence of AI systems today? Leave me a comment in the description of this video and smile with me. I see you in my next videos.